Hello, this is Yelena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and today's project is for Elizabeth Craft Designs. It's the my answer to the designer's challenge this month, which was sliders and spinners. So I created a lucky ladybug spinner card. And to make my background, I used the stamp, the large multi-pellet petaled flower stamp, <laughs> along with the uh, leaf stamp from the Spring Blooms stamp set. And I am going to be stamping this onto Bristol Smooth cardstock because I'm going to be using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers to uh, color it. And I love Bristol with Zigs, as you may know if you've watched any of my other videos. And so I am uh, stamping the flowers with VersaFine Pigment Ink. You could also use VersaMark as well. And then I'm uh, coating it with black embossing powder and heat setting it with my heat gun. And then I created two masks for the flowers using post-it notes. And you can see one there that I'm using um, as I stamp additional flowers and leaves around on the entire piece. And this piece of paper is A2 size, so it is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And there's a little uh, leaf you can see that I will be heat embossing here. And I just cover up the entire page, really. Um, until I get a nice arrangement that I'm happy with. I didn't do every single bit of the page as you can see, <laughs> but you know, that's okay. I was just going for like, as if ladybugs were landing in, um, on a bunch of flowers in a field, say. And now to color these, as I mentioned, I'm using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers and I'm using some water in a water brush and I'm wetting the paper first and then I am putting down a, like a base coat of color. And so I colored all of my flowers yellow and I used three shades of yellow. So the lightest was 51 lemon yellow. The middle color was 50 yellow. And then the darkest color is 52 bright yellow, which is really a very orangey yellow. And so basically I base coated with the lightest shade, then added the middle shade. And now I'm adding the darkest shade there, which is, you can see it's kind of orange um, to add some shading. Uh, towards the middles of the flowers. And at the very end of the coloring process, I will do an additional uh, technique to add some shading in, and I'll talk about that then. But there I'm blending that with the lightest shade and there I'm adding a little more dark shade too, just to get a good sort of blending going between the three yellow shades. And I'm trying to separate out those petals by using some uh, additional shading with the darkest color, which is that 52 yellow. And that's the brightest color, that 51 lemon yellow as the base coat color, which is super bright. Now I wanted these to look like, sort of like Black Eyed Susan. So for my centers, I made them brown. So I base coated with 65 mid brown, and then I added additional sort of dots and bits with 62 dark brown. There was no like fancy coloring method going on there. <laughs> it just, was basically the kind of scribbling in and then scribbling some additional uh, shading. Now for my leaves, I used three different shades. So the darkest one that I initially put down is 40 green. Then I kind of start to color that back out with 47 may green. And then I add 45 pale green as the lightest shade to kind of create a nice ombre effect on the leaves. So here you'll see I'm adding water. Then this is the 40 green, which is the darkest that I'm putting uh, closest to the flower because that's where it's going to be most shaded. Then I'm pulling that color out with the 47 May green, which is kind of a middle colored green. And then I'm blending the whole thing out with 45 pale green. And for my background, I colored it onto my craft mat and then I got some extra water from a cup and I sort of watered down the color a little bit. And then I just basically drew it into the background. And depending on how much water I added, I got lighter effects, um, less water, darker effects. And I did wind up going over this a few times, especially um, once I get the entire thing base coated, it's somewhat light. And so I do go back and add additional color, especially into areas like between the petals and around the edges to just get some nice variation in that purple shade, but it is quite vibrant in the end. And that was what I was going for. I really wanted some seriously bright purple background. Not realistic, but really fun. <laughs> and here's my little technique. I'm taking the 52 bright yellow and I'm going along and I'm just drawing basically right along any edge that should be dark. So, so if it's underneath another petal or if it's got a piece of a petal that's turned over, I'm drawing right along that edge 
and I don't blend it or anything. I just leave it drawn in as a, as a line to add like a little bit of extra dimension. Now for my base piece, I have a piece of rich black soft finish cardstock that I die cut out using the largest rectangle in the stitched rectangles die set. And then the flowered piece was cut out with the second largest die set in that same stitched rectangles die set. And then I have cut my slider piece. Now I've got it in there right side up <laughs> using the sliders and spinners dies. Um, and I use the longest curved die to do that. And then I cut two little foam dots out using that little uh, circle die set. And I would suggest putting clear double-sided adhesive tape on the backs of your foam dots as well as your ladybug pieces before you cut them out. It makes them really easy to stick down. Now you will need both ladybugs. I am only showing the one that's gonna go on the penny, um, but you will need to cut both out. And the red part is out of ladybug red, soft finish cardstock and the black is out of the rich black soft finish cardstock and then trace a pe trace a penny onto a piece of black and cut it out because you're going to need that to cover the penny that will be on the top because the penny is a little bit bigger than the than the ladybug so you can see i stuck my down the black piece to the penny and now i'm piecing together my ladybug and then because i didn't think to put clear double-sided adhesive sheep on the back of the black piece of the ladybug which i should have done um, I just used a little bit of a double-sided tape to adhere that down. It's three millimeter. And then you just stick that onto the top of the black piece on the penny, and that is the top of your spinner. Now to create the spinning action, you're going to have to put foam tape on the back of the flowered piece. So it takes two layers of foam tape. And so this is probably the most time consuming part of the entire thing, but it's not that bad. And so I've got some pretty wide foam tape that I'm actually dividing, uh, just cutting down in half. And then you're gonna need a second penny um, as the base of your spinner. And you need to make sure that the channel that you're creating with the foam tape is going to be wide enough apart that your penny can slide in between it, like up and down without any problems. Now you will see later that I do wind up having some issues with it. So you can always trim it down if you get it too close, but I would say probably be a little bit wider than you think you may need rather than super close. Cause I think because I went pretty close, um, I had to trim quite a bit in the end, but either way it works. It's not that big a deal to trim it down. So you just have to keep going around <laughs> and um, adding foam tape all around the back of your panel. Like, especially once you have the slider track kind of in, it's easier to then just add double-sided tape all over. And you can see it's kind of a bit of a piecemeal, but it works. You could always cut it out of fun foam too, if you're, if you're uh, smarter than I am. <laughs> but anyway, so that's your kind of the back of your, of your uh, slider piece. It's the flower piece. Now this is on the bottom penny, you're gonna stack those two white foam dots together right in the center. It's very important that you do it right in the center because that affects the way it will spin. If you do it off center, it's not gonna work properly. So just bear that in mind. And then now you wanna figure out how, where does the back of your slider track go on your black piece? Because that's gonna be adhered directly onto the black piece. So I'm just lining it up using my, the my floral panel that's got the two side, two layers of foam tape on it and then I'm tracing it with a pencil so I can put it back in place and now I'm using three millimeter double-sided adhesive tape from Elizabeth Craft Designs which is amazing <laughs> to stick it down onto the uh, soft finish black soft finish cardstock now if you don't press that double-sided adhesive tape very much in initially it's super easy to just pull it up and adjust it a little bit. So that's what I did by checking it, make sure it's okay. And then you can press it down firmly and it'll stay in place. Now, now to do your slider, you're gonna stick the penny through the slider track, foam tape side up there, and you're gonna place your ladybug penny right in the middle, right on top of it. So you don't wanna see the, the bottom penny uh, through the track at all. You don't wanna see it um, under the ladybug. So just make sure you line them up correctly. And then you need to just sort of play with it and check it and see, does it slide correctly up and down the channel? And this is where I discovered that I had some areas that were too tight where the penny just didn't want to flow. So you can see I'm taking my little detail scissors here and I'm just trimming off pieces of the foam tape where it got too tight. And it was really super easy to do, 
but my advice would be, you know, maybe just do it a little bit wider than I did to save yourself that hassle. We can see how well it slides once you get it um, all like to the right width. And then I always take some baby powder and a brush and I brush along the inside of the foam tape um, to let make sure the slider can just slide really super easily. I don't want it to stick accidentally on any stickiness on the sides of that foam tape. But don't get it on the top because you don't want to remove the adhesive off the top because that's going to stick it to your black piece. And so now you just peel off all the backing on your foam tape and we're going to adhere it down onto the black piece, making sure to line up that slider track that we adhered down earlier. And there you go. And it's kind of tough to see how it works because I'm holding it on an angle. It works a lot better when it's like straight up and down at a 90 degree, um, but it does work pretty cute. And there's the second ladybug that I stuck onto the flower in the lower right. And now I'm adding some enamel accent dots to uh, in black tie to the centers of the flowers. And I'm going to add glossy accents into the dots on the ladybugs just to give everything a little bit of a glossy accent. And then those two banners up there, those are a greeting and the banners are uh, made out of 85 pound white soft finish cardstock cut to one inch by two and a quarter inches. And I stamped that um, with the VersaFine black ink in, I used the good luck stamp from the general sentiment stamp set. And then the red banner is uh, five eighths inches by two and a half inches of ladybug red cardstock. And I just cut banner fishtail ends on them and I layer, and I'm just gonna layer them together in a minute here. But right now I'm, I am adhering down some red sequins and some clear droplets just to add a little bit of sparkle here and there around on the front. And now I'm using 10 millimeter double-sided adhesive tape to adhere my banners together and then adhere them down into place. And that is the completed project. And you can see I adhered the entire thing to an A2 sized white cardstock base that I cut from a hundred pound white soft finish cardstock. Now my spinner, you can see it working there. Again, oh, there you go. It's a little better when, it, when I hold it at a more of a steep angle. It kind of spins as it goes up and it slides as it goes down. Pretty cute if I do say so myself. <laughs> So hopefully you've gotten a little inspiration today on how to make a fun ladybug spinner card. And I'm sure all the rest of the design team has some fun slider and spinner cards available as well. You can get uh, see their projects uh, via a link on my website. You can find a supply list also on my website or it's linked in the video description below. If you like the video, I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. And you can also follow me on Instagram at blacksheep303, or you can follow Elizabeth Craft Designs at Elizabeth Craft Designs. Now here are two more projects I have done for designers challenges in the past, so click on those if you're interested. Thank you so much and have a great day.